Welcome back to another edition of Health Class. For today's video, we will be discussing about premature ejaculation. If you can remember the last video, we were discussing about erectile dysfunction. Today, it's all about premature ejaculation. It's the second most common men's sexual dysfunction condition amongst men. We will be discussing about the causes, the treatments, and the preventative measures that men can do in order for premature ejaculation or PE not to happen. Again, I will require your maturity and understanding because this is a very serious health condition amongst men. If you want to know more, keep on watching. Hello everyone, welcome back once again. My name is Ryan and I'm specializing in alcohol and drugs, men's sexual health, diabetes, and primary care. So today we'll be discussing about premature ejaculation. What is premature ejaculation? According to betterhealth.vic.gov.au, it is when men is not lasting longer than they used to be. So, if a man engage in a sexual activity and they used to last longer than, let's just say, for example, longer than 10 minutes, longer than 30 minutes, but now they only last for one minute or less. According to healthymail.org.au, premature ejaculation usually is less than one to one and a half minutes. So, if a male usually lasts for, let's just say, five minutes, and now they only last for less than one minute or one to one and a half minutes, then that would classify as premature ejaculation. Of course, if it's not an issue for the couple, if it's not an issue for your partner, then it is not an issue. But if it's an issue for the guy, and if it's an issue for your partner, then it is premature ejaculation. It requires treatment. If it's not an issue for you and for your partner, then no treatment is needed. What is the cause or causes of premature ejaculation or PE? In the past, premature ejaculation or PE is thought to be psychological or mainly psychological or entirely psychological. However, it is now believed to have a chemical imbalance in the brain and this could also lead to performance anxiety. And what is performance anxiety? Performance society or stage fright is caused primarily by negative thoughts. These thoughts can be related to sex or issues in daily life. Men can feel the pressure to please their partners or feel insecure about their ability to perform sexually. A few examples could be uh, having fear or, or being anxious about their penis size, about their body image, also play a role in performance anxiety. Other causes could be work, work issues, work-related issues, family-related issues, finances, to name a few. When I say psychological factors, it could be just like erectile dysfunction. The common ones are anxiety, depression, if you are diagnosed with a mental health-related condition or conditions, stress, if you had negative sexual childhood experiences, failures in life, to name a few. What are the treatments? So it depends upon what type of premature ejaculation a man has. So there are two types of premature ejaculation. One is lifelong and the other one is acquired premature ejaculation. So what is lifelong premature ejaculation or PE? It occurs all or nearly all the time beginning with the first sexual encounter. And what is acquired premature ejaculation or PE? It happens after previous sexual experiences without any problems with ejaculation. So if you had sexual encounters in the past and, and you didn't have any issues at all, but then as the time goes by, you started, you started noticing that you're not lasting longer than you used to be. That is acquired premature ejaculation. There's few treatments for premature ejaculation or PE. We have conservative management and we also have pharmacological or medication 
management or treatment plans. Let's start with the conservative management or treatment for, for premature ejaculation. We have behavioral techniques. We have the two most common behavioral techniques. We'll start with the start-stop technique. What is start-stop technique? It is about learning to control the sensations prior to ejaculation. You will repeatedly bring yourself close to ejaculation, then stop and rest, and then repeat the steps. The second behavioral technique is the squeeze technique. What is squeeze technique? The squeeze technique is by squeezing the, the end of the penis just before ejaculation to lessen the urge to ejaculate. That means when you are close to ejaculation, you stop and you squeeze the end of the penis, that means the head of the penis, for a few seconds to lessen the urge to ejaculation, leading to a longer ejaculation time. Now we also have Kegel's exercise. Kegel's exercise or pelvic floor exercise is also used to manage erectile dysfunction. If you can remember, if you watch my video about erectile dysfunction, I've also discussed Kegel's exercise there. Kegel's exercise is also used for pregnant women because it can actually improve their pelvic and back muscles that will aid them in a safe delivery of the baby. It is also applicable for men who are suffering from erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation to, to help strengthen their pelvis and back area. Like erectile dysfunction, psychotherapy and counseling or sexual health counseling are very important in this management plan to improve premature ejaculation. In this type of therapy, any underlying anxiety, any underlying psychological issues in life can be explored. And if these underlying anxieties or if these underlying psychological issues are fixed, then it can lead to an improved performance anxiety, leading to an improved premature ejaculation. And psychotherapy and sexual health counseling is usually done by a, a psychologist, a sexual health counselor, a sex therapist. Then we have pharmacological or medication options. We have something that will lessen the sensitivity of the penis. We have in a spray form or we also have in a cream form. This is to lessen the sensitivity of the head of the penis or the glands penis in order to have a prolonged ejaculation time. So the way it's done is you just, if you're using the, the, the premature ejaculation spray, one spray on the top of your penis with the aim of reducing the sensitivity of your penis. You also have a cream. You just apply the cream at the top of your penis or the glands penis or the head of the penis. But the thing is that you need to wear condom after using either of these two. Why? Because you don't want the chemical or the substance to be transferred across to your partner. Then we have the SSRIs or tricyclic antidepressants medications. These type of medication can also be used for premature ejaculation, designed for men to last longer. So by taking these medications, it has something to do with the side effects of these medications. One of the side effects of this medication is to slow ejaculation. However, this can also cause a reduce in sex drive or libido, nausea, sweating, fatigue, to name a few. So you need to have a discussion with your doctor in order for you to figure out what's the best medication for you. The first line and the most common medication for premature ejaculation is the poxetin. The poxetin is an approved medication treatment. According to betterhealth.vic.gov.au, if the premature ejaculation is associated with erectile dysfunction or ED, then the ED meds can also help restore control of premature ejaculation. Now, if so happened that you both have premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction, we have compounded medications available out there. That means you can be taking a premature ejaculation medication and erectile dysfunction medication at the same time in one go. They are compounded together in one physical tablet. And there are plenty of options for you out there. It's just a matter of you discussing with your GP or your specialist. But first, you might be wondering, what is ejaculation? Let us define ejaculation in a simple way. Ejaculation is the release of sperm cells and seminal plasma or seminal fluid from the male reproductive system. So what happens in ejaculation? 
In ejaculation, muscles in the pelvis and penis contract several times and expel the semen through the urethra out of the penis. After ejaculation, the erection decreases and you have a temporary period where you can't have another erection known as refractory period. Trivia. A lot of people ask me, is orgasm and ejaculation the same? And if they're not the same, what is the difference between the two? These two physiological events are different from each other. In sexual activity, orgasm comes first and then followed by ejaculation. Orgasm is when you reach that stage that you are all that you're almost finished. You feel the urge to finish the activity. You feel satisfied. And when you reach that satisfaction stage, then ejaculation happens. Now, ejaculation happens after orgasm. When you ejaculate, that is actually you ejaculate semen. So, orgasm happens first, followed by ejaculation. These two are different from one another. You need to see your doctor when you think that you ejaculate sooner than you want. It is common to feel embarrassed, especially when you discuss sexual health concerns to other people. But please don't let that keep you from talking to your doctor about your sexual health concern. It is common, it is happening. You need to speak to your doctor the earliest possible in order for it to not to progress to an advanced stage. Premature ejaculation is common and it is treatable. Thank you very much for watching this video. I look forward to catching up with you on my next health class. Stay safe and be healthy.